Hi, today we're going to identify and plotting coordinates in the first quadrant. I'm going to explain what that means in a moment. To be successful, you're going to use your previous knowledge of coordinates. You're going to use your previous knowledge of 2D shapes and their properties. Or just spot the spelling mistake. And apply my knowledge of coordinates to solve problems. So first of all, I mentioned the first quadrant. Well, as you can see on the board, I have a grid that is split into four. This is typically what happens when in grids when we plot coordinates. And we can see that from the middle here, I have positive numbers going up and positive numbers going right. I have negative numbers going left and negative numbers going down. So you can see I have four quadrants. We call each section a quadrant. And the first quadrant is the one where both are positive. This one here, this is our first quadrant. So we're gonna be focusing just on the positives today. So, plot these shapes and identify what shape they make. Now, when plotting coordinates, I always remember the phrase, along the corridor and up the stairs. That just links to my x-axis, which is the one that goes across. Get it? X, across. And the one going up, I label Y. So I might be referring to my coordinates as X and Y. That is how coordinates are written. X and Y. So along the corridor refers to the always the first digit or the first number, the X one, which in this case will be 2. So I'm going to be counting along 1, 2 there. And I'm going then to along the Y axis, so 2 up, 1, 2. So that is my first coordinate. I'm going to rub that the rest out so it doesn't... Okay, my next one then, 8 along, because on my, on my Y coordinate is 8, so I'm going to go along 8, so I'm going to go to here, and my Y coordinate is 4, so I'm going to go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, there. Finally, last one, I'm going to go along 2, along my X axis, and I'm going to go up 6. There we go. Now, I told me to plot the shape. Now, at the moment, these are just x's. These are, this is just the coordinates. So I need to now plot the shape that this makes. So, I'm going to be drawing with a ruler, if you can, a straight line from there to there. Joining up my coordinates. There we go. Now, what shape do they make. Well, it's very clearly a triangle, however I can be more specific here and I can notice that my point on this side, on the right hand side, is halfway up the shape. Therefore, this line down here, this bottom line, must be the same length as this line up the top here. I can see how they are the same length. So that tells me that this must be an isosceles, isosceles, so I have to say it out in order to spell it right, triangle. Let's have a go at another one. Here we go. So, plotting these shapes, remembering that the first coordinate is x, the second coordinate is y, and I'm going to label my axes x and y so I know which way I'm going. So, first one, I'm going across one and up. Five. Cross one, up five, there it is. Next one I'm going to go along five and up nine, to there. Then I'm going to go along eight and up six, so take me to there. And then I'm going to go along four and up two, taking me to there. So I can see I must have a four-sided shape. Can't quite see it perfectly yet because I haven't joined them up, so making sure I take my time joining these up perfect there we go so it's very clear I have four sided shape I can see that in here I have right angles so if I have all of these right angles and it's a four sided shape it must either be a square or a rectangle I can also see that this line is the same as this line same length but they're not the same length as these two lines. 
Obviously those two opposite are the same, but they're not the same as the first two I identified, so my shape must be a rectangle. Your job now, I'd like you to have a go at task one, plotting the coordinates in the first quadrant um, and naming the 2D shape that you have drawn. Right, okay. You'll notice now that next task two is problems. Using your coordinates um, knowledge to solve problems. And you'll see that in most of these problems, the grid has completely gone. Same with all the numbers along my x and my y axes. So this requires a slightly different skill. I still need to remember here that when I'm plotting coordinates, I go along first and then up. So do x and then y. So I am just going to write that out to remind myself of the order of my coordinates there. Now I'm going to look at the problem. This diagram shows two identical rectangles on a coordinate axis. Write the coordinates of point A and point B. Now I can see A is that and B is that. Great. So let's have a look at A first then. I can see if these are identical then I can see that the distance from there to the middle must be the same as there to the middle. So that must be the same as that. Therefore A must lie in between those two coordinates. Now because I'm going up and down, I can see I'm going vertically here, that's how I'm working. I can see that my Y coordinate over here for this bottom part will be 3. I can see my X coordinate no, sorry, my y coordinate for the top coordinate is 9, and my a must be bang in the middle. Almost, pretty well drawn. So, what coordinate is between 3 and 9? Must be 6. Bang in the middle is 6. So, my y coordinate for a must be 6. Now, my x, this was probably a lot easier and probably should have got this one first, I can see that both of these points, this coordinate I used and this coordinate I used, both are 12 along and I can see that A is in line with them, so I can see that my X must be 12 along as well. So A is 12, 6. Now let's have a look at B, I'm going to change colour for this. I, let's see, start with the easier one, I can see that B is the same along the same line, not very well drawn, as that's terribly drawn actually, I'm going to redo that. If it lets me. I can see that B is along the same line as this coordinate here. And that coordinate is three up. I can see how that would be three up there. So my Y coordinate is going to be three as it's in line with it. Now I just need to know how far it is. I need to figure out what that point there is. We can see it would go down to there. Now in order to do that, this is where they tell me it's two identical rectangles. So therefore, the distance between the part I know here, this 12, 3, that distance to B must be the same as this one up here from 5, 9 to 12, 9. So let's think, how old do I get from 5 to 12? I add 7. So in order to get from 12 to whatever B is, I'm going to add 7 as well. It must be the same distance. So that must be 19 across. So B must be 19, 3. That's um, a quite a simple one where we're only looking at um, coordinates in one direction. So you can see how um, I was always able to get one of my parts of my coordinates, either the Y or the X, very simply, and I only had to think about the other one. Here is a slightly harder problem where I'm going to have to think about both coordinates in turn. So, first thing I'm going to do is have a look and I'm going to see what I notice. Here is a pentagon drawn on a coordinate grid. The pentagon is symmetrical. That's quite a key point here, which must mean that this line down the middle must be my line of symmetry. 
down there. So any distance away from that line must be the same either side. I can see at the bottom, the distance from the middle to E must be the same as middle to D. That's what symmetrical tells me. So, I want to find the coordinates of C. Just going to remember here that I go X first and then Y. So, let's see. A must be the point that is symmetrical to C. As you can see, I've drawn the arrows to them already. So C must be the same distance from that middle line that A is. So let's have a look. What is that middle line? Well, I can see that B is on that middle line, that line of symmetry. And I can see that B is 7 along. So this point here must be 7. Now, to get from the middle to point A, which is roughly there, I can see point A is 4 along. 4. So let's see how far that distance is. Well, that distance would be three. Ah, uh, three, yeah. I'd be either be adding three or subtracting three, depending which way I was going. So therefore, the distance to here, as you can see I'm drawing down there, must also be three. So seven out of three is going to give me 10. So C must be 10 along. Now let's figure out how high it is. So C is in line with A, and A I can see is 9 high there. I can see C is in line with it, so 10, 9 must be my answer. Your job now is to have a look at task 2. There we go. You've got a mixture of problems using this same principle of um, and there's no grid on some of them, not all of them. So sort of missing grid, missing coordinates, seeing if you can use all of that knowledge to figure out what those missing coordinates are. You have a range. And as per normal, all answers are underneath.